So this week's episode of Thrive is all about getting under the conscious mind. Tina Greenbaum is my guest. She's an executive coach with a clinical background for 37 years and author of Mastery Under Pressure. All that stands between you and your goals is you. One of our mutual colleagues uh, introduced us and I'm thrilled that he did. Tina, welcome to the show. It's so good to see you again. Uh, thank you so much, Kelly. Thanks for having me. So in Mastery Under Pressure, um, you talk about this concept of um, how to use fear as a teacher so that we can overcome it and reach our goals. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because that was really interesting to me. Sure. But well, there's a wonderful great sayings, a uh, couple of them that I use all the time is the only way past it is through it. Mm -hmm. So what our general tendency is to, when we, when we get scared about something, we don't want to look at it. We, we get scared and we turn the other way and the tendency is to avoid. And so when we do that, we miss the opportunity to like find out like, what is my body and what is my mind? What is my intuition telling me? Right. And so I always kind of think of it as like, if you don't look at it, then you're putting on blindfolds and then you're trying to figure out like, where do I go from here? Yeah. So another wonderful saying that I love about it, it's the only thing that gets smaller as it gets closer. Oh. So when it's very far away and we're avoiding it, it's really, really, really big. But if we start to look and, oh yeah, I understand that. Yeah, that, that would make sense. That's why I'm scared about that. Or this is what I need to do about it. Right. Right. Oh, that's so interesting. I really, really like that. It's kind of, it reminds me of the, uh, the rear view mirror, like yes. objects in this mirror. Yes. The mirror. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So your body gives you all kinds of wonderful information and we don't want to miss it. Yeah. Um, so kind of transitioning to taking that fear and, um, having it teach us something, mm -hmm. there are all different ways in which we can really have that be actionable, right? So given our current um, yes. economic, political, racial, uh, environmental climate, yes, we have a lot of things that are vying for our attention and a lot of things that are keeping us in fear. Mm -hmm. um, how can initiating what you call the relaxation response help agency leaders to, to navigate all of this and to really kind of tolerate the unknown as we move forward? Okay. Right, and that's a great way of, of tolerating the unknown and tolerating the uncertainty. So we have a nervous system, and when we're in high alert, it's the sympathetic nervous system that is activated. And most, many people, just even before COVID hit, are in a chronic state of stress, right. you know, kind of deadlines and all kinds of things that are coming up. So when we're in that, that state, the hormones, the, the stress hormones are coursing through our body. Um, steroids and cortisol and getting us ready for that fight or flight response. And so when we're in that response all the time, the body is tight, the muscles get tight, and it knocks down our immune system. And this is what actually makes us um, reset, you know, susceptible to stress-related illnesses. So through the breath, your breath is the only thing that we have that's voluntary, that we can change that nervous system from that sympathetic nervous system that's on high alert to what they call the parasympathetic nervous system where it's like ah oh, i got money in the bank you know everything is fine i got lots of time might sound absurd right now but the more that we can live in that nervous system the quieter the body is and then the calmer the mind so when they talk about a body mind connection or a mind body connection that's kind of what we're talking about that these things are so interrelated. And if we wanna be able to manage them or control them in any, in any possible way, we can do it through the breath. Mm -hmm. And it's something that you can practice. And many times people say, well, I'm relaxed. You know, I watch TV or I do this or I run or I do exercise. Those are ways of relaxing, but it's nothing like that deep, deep, deep state of relaxation where your brain waves start to slow down and your body slows down, your breathing slows down, and it's very restorative. Yeah, I have a little um, personal hack that I've come up with to uh, to kind of force myself to remember that mm -hmm. that's an option. 
that's mm-hmm. always, that that's always available to me. So yes. parasympathetic, um, I just kind of created that as the acronym PS. So you know how when you're writing a letter uh, at the end, you might say PS, right? And it's something that causes you to pause before you finish yeah. the letter. And it's something that um, just, it, it's like a changing the environment or changing changing the fact that you're just like reading something and kind of on default, like in default mode. Yes. And then it kind of stops you for a second. So whenever I'm kind of feeling in that, I'm like, oh, PS, right? And it's just oh, a like that. tiny little that. thing. Yeah. It's well, because, but, but that little thing that you said is so important because it's the pause. Mm-hmm. We have a conditioned response, you know, when we do things, you know, we kind of like, you know, I do this and then I do that and then I do that. And that's the way the neural pathway has developed. Mm -hmm. These are habits, right? So in order to change a habit, we have to have some level of consciousness that, or mindfulness, you know, awareness of what's going on so that we can then create the pause and then we can choose a different point. Right. Right. That's exactly what I say. I say, PS, you have a choice. I love it. Yeah, it's great. Um, So there's another tool that you have that you talk about in the book um, with regard to visualization, right? Which is especially relevant to creative leaders. We're very visual people. Um, So how do you suggest creating powerful visualizations to increase the probability of realizing a desired outcome? Okay, perfect. So it's, it's the use of your senses. So you can visualize, you can picture something Let's just say you want to picture um, an outcome of a project that you're working on, mm-hmm. you know, and that your you know, your people are going to love it, your clients going to love it, and there's an and you're even imagining what is what is the presentation of the you know of, of the of the event is going to be. So you bring in all your senses. You bring in you know kind of the room that you're in. Well, right now we're all on on Zoom, so we can still imagine. Um, how many, you know, what, what the, what everything looks like and the people look like and what the, how I want to feel and the feeling that I want to um, evoke in the people that I'm working with. So it's, it's your, all your senses. I, I can taste it. I can feel it. I can see it. And you create this image. So I do this every time before I'm getting ready to do a, a talk or a presentation or a speech, or uh, I imagine the room that I'm in. I, I, I think a lot about the, the energy that I want to create and I imagining, you know, looking at you, I'm doing a podcast with you and imagining before I even get on, you know, how I want to be, how I want to look, how I want to feel. So you get us all, bring in all your senses and you, and you do it with great, great detail. Mm. And so when you do that, your brain already has gone through the experience. So it's not the first time when you do not it. Not the first time. Right. That's exactly right. right. Yeah, so interesting. And I would imagine that this is something that um, creatives can definitely latch onto because they're already used to creating things yeah. in their mind. And you know, when you start hearing a creative brief or whatever it might be, your brain automatically starts going to like, oh, I wonder what concepts could come up, uh, could arise for this brand identity, or I wonder what the website could look like, or right, like all of these ideas come right. into your consciousness very naturally right so this is just a way to um to do that in order to prepare you for um, the realization of these desired outcomes whether it's a sales call or uh, some type of presentation or whatever it might be you can really use it for anything right you can use it for anything and and you can use it um you know i I have a lot of background in sports psychology so i love sports and i love athletics and i like the emotion that's created around it but there's also a lot of pressure Mm. and so a lot of times like great teams will do a preparation and visualization. Let's imagine that we're on a bus and we're going to a game and we get a flat tire. Mm-hmm. And so we go through that whole scenario and what would that look like and, and how would we deal with this? And then how would we deal with that? So that when the actual event comes, you've already problem solved and brainstormed and imagined all the, all the possibilities. So the unknown, and this comes back to a, a lot of the stuff that we're dealing with right now, uh, we have plan B, we have plan C, or we, we know that we can make it up, but we, we think ahead of time. Yeah. And um, it's very powerful. Yeah. Um, I think about that also in terms of like business development, when you're doing a discovery call or mm-hmm. reviewing a proposal with a prospective client, I think the visualization or 
and I don't even know if it's actually vis visualization or just preparedness, but thinking mm -hmm. about and listing out um, all of the questions that they might ask that might could exactly. potentially feel like out of left field, but writing all of those different things down and having your responses, um, I think mm -hmm. that really prepares you for success because then you're not sort of waffling in a moment, right? Right, and then if you even wanna prepare more, you could actually rehearse it with somebody. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a speaker, so a lot of times I think about it. Speaking off the, you know, off the cuff, is not the same as actual real preparation. Right. And doing it over and over and over again, and saying things out loud, and what if this happens, and what if that happens. So these combinations of the preparation, how you talk to yourself, um, the visualizations, they put you in a really good place to be prepared. Yeah. Yeah. Let's face it, agency life looks very different than ever before. Remote and hybrid teams need better tools to help them communicate and access files, track their time, manage client budgets, and more. If you believe that it's time to streamline things once and for all, Workamajig is the all-in-one agency management platform built to help you do just that. Head over to workamajig.com forward slash thrive to learn more. Back to the show. Um, most of us obviously are all still working from home. Mm -hmm. um, and I think time management has definitely fallen a little bit by the wayside <laughs> because the lines are very blurred now. Yes, they are. So you talk a lot about um, Eisenhower's time management quadrants and I'm wondering how that might be applicable to uh, the agency leaders that are listening. Yeah, so I had heard people talk about this before and I kind of like, you know, I did a little research and Eisenhower, this is the way he did it when he was a general and then probably the president. Uh, so there's quadrants, there's four quadrants. One is important and urgent. Then there's important, but not urgent, not important, and not urgent. And the fourth one is get it off the list. <laughs> it doesn't belong in any one of those three quadrants. Okay. Get it off the list. Not applicable. So, right. So I like to talk about a lot of the stuff that, that I do in terms of working with people's minds and good mental health and you know, stress management and all that. In many times in businesses, it was the way, you know, kind of the marketing that I would get was it's important, but not urgent. You know, we value how people think and how our you know employees feel and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, we got, we got other things that are more important, mm -hmm. but in COVID now, this is important and urgent. Mm -hmm. I don't know that companies can really not pay attention to the, how their employees and how they're feeling and how they're managing, you know, all this time management stuff. So right. a lot of times in the morning, um, when I, or the night before, when I kind of think about what's coming up for the next day uh, and I'm making my plans for how I'm going to prioritize what I can realistically accomplish in a day. And I use the word realistically accomplish because <laughs> the list really never gets really, really, really done. Right. But what is really important and urgent and what are, the, what are the values that you put on to put into that list? So in other words, if we're in business, um, it's been said to me, and I really kind of think it's true, 80% of the day really needs to be focused on income producing activity. So I wouldn't necessarily um, kind of use this valuable time to do my bookkeeping unless it was really important that it was my, it was going to, you know, intimately create, you know, connected to my income or just, you know, or using, get, getting onto Facebook or any, any of the social media. The, the statistics say that if you get, if you go off for 30 seconds, you're likely to be there for half an hour, right. 30 minutes. Right. So be, again, this comes back to being conscious about how am I using my time? Is this taking me, if, if I've set out a goal for myself, is this matching up to that goal or have I gotten distracted? And that's one of the other things I, I talk a lot about is focus, you know, being in focus, you know, knowing when I'm focused and knowing when I'm out of focus and then how to bring myself back and really being disciplined with yourself um, has a lot to do with your time management. I'm wondering if, you know, because so many people sort of default to lists, like list making. I know I definitely did when I owned my agency. I had to get it out of my mind so that it was on right. paper, right? Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if like one of the 
the methods for using these quadrants or taking that list, which you know that you're probably, until you train yourself out of making the list, you right. make the list and then next to it on the same page, you create the quadrant and then you add the things from the list to those quadrants. Is that sort of how you're- That's sort of what I do. Or one of the other things that I'll do is I'll look at the list and then I'll, 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 I'll number them. Yeah. So I might have, you know, five or six things on and this is one, this is two, <laughs> this way down here. Yeah. And so it puts order. So I, I think one of the things that's really important in this period is that we do best when we're grounded, you know, when our mind is not scattered and all over the place. And it's the easiest place to be right now, because right. there's, as you mentioned, in addition to all the social things that are happening in, in terms of, and then what's happening in people's homes and um, you're not used to working from home and, and being disciplined and then you've got kids and dogs, all kinds of things. So it's really about grounding yourself. What do you need to do? You and I were just talking just before we, um, you know, we came on in terms of, I, I have a wonderful meditation group that every morning at 7.15, which really, really grounds me. <laughs> and um, because I'm in this group and I'm actually even paying for it, um, but that's so secondary, but I'm in this group. And so there's a, there's a, an accountability. There's a commitment to myself, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. somewhat to the group. I don't know whether they would really notice whether I was there or not, but it gives me order. Mm -hmm. It gives me structure. Mm -hmm. And so when we come to the, you know, the level of uncertainty that we're living in, it's, it's really about what's in my control what's out of my control. This is one of the central themes that I think about every day, as soon as I start to feel anxious. The second I feel anxious, okay, what's in my control, what's out of my control. Right, right. That's a good way to put it. Um, and I really, really resonate with the, the idea of commitment to self. Um, mm -hmm. I, I love that. I talk about that also because um, for me, it comes down to trust, right? Like if trust is so important in all of our relationships, how can you expect someone else to trust you if you don't inherently trust yourself? And making these small commitments, like going to this meditation practice every day, um, that's a commitment to self, right? That's right. So um, along those lines, you like to leave leaders um, with a simple question um, mm -hmm. that actually helps them to explore things for themselves. And the question is, do you believe that the skills and the knowledge that you got, that got you to where you are now mm -hmm. are going to be enough to get you where you want to go? And um, I think that's a really beautiful question. And I think, you know, the, the introspective nature of it mm -hmm. really allows people to be conscious of like, you know, am I, am I defaulting or am I growing Right. Um, I'm just curious, what are some of the, uh, the conversations or some of the, the things that have come out of that question that you've asked to other people? Uh, it's, it's interesting. I just had a conversation with a, a colleague, a friend yesterday, mm -hmm. and she's just said, I'm, 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 I'm bored. I'm just mm -hmm. like really bored. I went to a conference. Uh, actually, it was a live conference. It was one of the few. Oh, wow. Um, you know, they, they all took the risk to, to go and, and to be there and they were very conscious of how they were set up and so on. She said, but you know, I, it's the same people. Um, the speakers were great, but I've heard them all before. Um, she said, is there something wrong with me? You know, am I not you know, challenging myself to grow or um, doing the introspective work about what's going on. And there's a really wonderful diagram that I learned a long time ago, and I can just describe it if somebody's sure. listening. But imagine that you're a dot and everything that you have ever done in your life is all involved in this dot hit. You know, your education, the knowledge you have, your life experience. But at some point, it gets a little kind of, you know, boring. It gets a little tight. And we want to get outside of that dot. And so we start to venture outside. But oh my goodness, this has no shape. This has no form. This has, so I think I'm going to go back. It's a lot safer to be a dot. And so we go back in here and then we get, again, we're bored and then we, we venture out. But if we allow ourselves to continue to venture out, we have no idea where we're going. We have no idea what it's looking like, but we're sort of following that intuition. At some point, we become a triangle, right? So we've got the dot and now we're a triangle. We have all the space to discover all these new things. So it's a process of discover, explore, 
and mature. Mm. And so now I'm, I'm in this triangle, you know, I know every nook and cranny of it. I'm so bored. And then we start to venture out again, okay? And so this is a wonderful way to think about the process of growth of where am I today on this scale? Right. So my friend was, she had, she was at the edge, edge, she was done. She was ready for something new and didn't really realize it. And so we just started talking about, you know, other possibilities of things where she could take her business and take herself and, and new groups and um, new energy. And then we get vitalized, you know, we right. vitalize. Yeah. And so um, that's for people who are really growth oriented. Um, many people will stay in that dot forever. Yeah. Yeah. It's so interesting. I really love that analogy so much because I think of the dot as, um, you know, the more that, that is encompassed in that or comprised in that, the tighter it feels because everything, everything is keeping you small. That's right. Right. And so I like the idea of changing the shape. There's something nice about that. Um, changing it from, uh, the triangle. And then I would imagine, you know, as you're going out, you're probably creating uh, a square and then ultimately you probably get back to a circle again, but the circle <laughs> is so much bigger. It's like 25 right. times bigger. Um, that's yeah. That's right. a really, really interesting uh, analogy. And, and, what I, and what I said to her, you know, I've been doing this for a very long time and my clients don't bore me. I get bored with me sometimes, you know, if I'm repeating the same thing and, you know, I'm using the same techniques and so, and, and so when I get to that place, when I get bored with me, it's time for me to grow again. It's yeah. time for me to, to learn something new. And right? that's where the, the self-awareness comes, right? And being conscious of it. Yeah. Oh. So good. Oh, I love this conversation. Uh, <laughs> Tina, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And I will put show notes uh, in the show notes. I will put links to your website and to the book on Amazon as well. Thank you so much. And there's also a quiz that people can take. Okay, great. And, uh, I'll get to that too. And, and they can see where they are on all these different things that we've talked about today. Fantastic. Thank you so much again. Thank you. This episode has been brought to you by Workamajig, the number one creative agency management software. Show notes at thrive.workamajig.com. Find out how your creative agency can become more productive and more profitable. Schedule your demo at thrive.workamajig.com.